we are living in an era where you wake up one day and you have no shelter. You are homeless. The same land that you rely on for survival has been taken away. Where is the justice? Every day when you wake up, there are a lot of alarming stories. Child abuse, gender-based violence, the right to education has been taken away. All these stories go uncovered and you wonder, where is the media in all this? Where is the justice? This is the access to justice and media development story supported by the European Union in Zambia in partnership with the Zambian Governance Foundation. So in 2014, the European Union signed a 5.5 million euro contract with the Zambian Governance Foundation. And one of the reasons why the EU got to partner with ZGF is because we looked at the various organizational capacity development tools which were existent in ZGF. There was a realization that ZGF had the capacity in-house to be able to manage to provide implementation oversight to the partners who were going to be awarded contracts by the EU in areas of access to justice and media development. So overall, um, the program really sought to contribute to the enhancement of service delivery in Zambia, which would be as a result of enlarging the democratic space in order to allow for citizens um, and civil society organizations to actually participate in the governance of the country at different levels of, of society. So you're talking from a local level to district level, provincial level, right up to, up to the national level. So this was a four-year program that was uh, developed in collaboration with uh, the EU and the ZGF. So we had eight organizations that were implementing different uh, activities or interventions under the program. Uh, these were split between access to justice and media development as the two themes that the program was about. Uh, so under access to justice, we had uh, the Women for Change, uh, we had Voluntary Services Overseas or VSO, who were working with uh, the Zambia Land Alliance and their district partner in Mansa. Um, we also had uh, the Norwegian Church Aid, who were working with uh, the Women and Law in Southern Africa, or WILSA, as well as uh, the National Legal Aid Clinic for Women. Uh, we also had Plan Norway, working through its country office in Zambia, together with uh, the Young Women Christian Association. We had WILDAF as well, implementing activities. And then last but not least, we had uh, the Avoca San Frontier, uh, who were working with uh, the Young Women Christian Association as well. Um, for the media development theme, we had Barefoot Theatre, as well as uh, Free Press Unlimited, uh, who were working with uh, the Alliance for Community Action and the House of, uh, of Consciousness. implementing a project called Land Justice uh, from 2015 to 2018. The project was being managed by VSO Zambia and implemented by Zambia Land Alliance and MDL, which is Massa District Land Alliance. The focus of the project was uh, basically looking at land access and ownership and also access to land justice and are contributing to a friendly environment. We are the, what we are calling community land advocacy committees. So the community land advocacy committees were a community-based structure where, uh, which comprise of about 10 people or so. So for example, in the, in the Manza district, we had two land, land groups, and then we had two in Chembe, and we had two in the, in the, in the Chenge district. So the plaques in, in their form were helping communities to access information on land administration uh, through the trainings that they, they, they had to undergo in support from the project. 
So at community level, we had clerks. Then at district level, we formed what we are calling district working groups. So the district working groups uh, comprised of uh, civil society organizations that were working in Chenga, for example, in Mansa and Chenge, and then the uh, traditional leaders and the various government departments. So uh, the arrangement was to, 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 to create a platform where various stakeholders will come together and then also technical people who are coming from different uh, uh, government departments providing technical support to the community. For example, if a person wants to know how to acquire land in state land, so the person would go to Ministry of Land. So since we have the, the, the officer from Ministry of Land in the, in the working group, the, the officer would be able to explain the procedures people are supposed to follow in acquiring uh, customer land. Uh, citizens for communities within um Wakula were not able to talk about land rights. But if you go there today, they can even challenge traditional leaders and also quote them, you know, using the Zambian law to say this is what our law states. Uh, the progress that uh, we saw on the ground when it comes to issues of addressing gender based violence, uh, where you even had uh, traditional leaders such as the ones that uh, Women for Change were working with in, uh, uh, in Kapiri Poshi, actually beginning to come to the fore as well in terms of uh, them beginning to realize their role and beginning to play that role in ensuring that uh, gender-based violence was addressed uh, within their communities.
we established what we call the community anti-GBV uh, clubs. So these clubs um, are comprised of community members who underwent our trainings or our sensitizations and uh, we engage them further to actually form these clubs. And so in these clubs they would actually meet um, monthly and uh, they will hold their uh, sensitization meetings or if not they will do door-to-door -door sensitization. On community engagement, uh, through sensitization that we were conducted um, in different locations. Uh, here we used a drama to gather people, mobilize people to listen to messages on gender-based violence. Never <laughs> <laughs> So, the Makanya go and go go courti, and the Kashita inform a pararigo, a pararigo bagazakunda, Baka was a statement, who's a wind to me parenti, a ku mana gaba default. After there, a Makanya go court. Ulabo Nikabo Kuba Tari Tachi past petty mining, even my activity up and under Ronchi to Gusevenza, by Gusevenza before, the seven Zikabot, which borrow. Very slow in thinking, doing things. There was uh, a new transformation because of the approach that we use as Women for Change of uh, being there in the communities, raising awareness, and the people saw the need uh, to change. has uh, recorded quite a number of successes. Uh, you might want to note that uh, we worked with a cadre of different stakeholders in addressing gender-based violence. And uh, just to mention a few, we worked with the police, we worked with the health personnel, we, uh, we worked with the ministries of uh, community development, ministries of gender, ministry of uh, chiefs and traditional affairs. We also worked with the judiciary one of the major successes I would say the project scored was the coming up of uh, bylaws and ending uh, child marriages, teenage pregnancies and defilement and child labour. So I think the project was um, quite successful, we're happy with uh, the results, especially that we are still seeing a lot of impact from the project in the site where it was implemented from to date. I think information is, uh, I think, the key to success, even better than we, we think education, but it's information, because that's what we get from school. So in, at every step in, in a person's life, it's information that helps you to make a choice. So we put together skills development programs where we bring in professionals in uh, the fields of uh, creative uh, industries, media to train uh, young people here. We trained young people um, in um, a number 
of provinces to link them to eight radio stations and they were able to first of all understand themselves as active citizens, understand the link between themselves, their communities and government money and then begin to routinely produce stories around service delivery issues within their own communities. So my main interest has been on uh, holding government leaders, you know, accountable, not just leaders accountable to our resources, how they manage our resources and other things. Then in terms of uh, service delivery, there are some uh, some people from what we call low cost areas, they are now able to they are now able to receive the same services as people live the same uh, the same as people live in the high cost areas. For example, I give this example of Swasco, uh, how they used to arrange a water pipe when you come here in home. If you go in low cost areas, water pipes just pass anywhere they can cross the road, exposed like then people were just fine. But if you observe in high cost areas, they are arranging it properly. But from the time I, you know, I, I gave this check on, on the sports guys, okay, they have now improved. They are now visiting back the low cost areas, arranging things, order, such things. So the, the, the impact actually is beyond what I can explain. It's very big. I've made a big impact as well. Very big impact. In the community, everyone knows that if there is a step out, then we are going to bring about change. The training gave me those powers to stand alone and save the community. Yeah. Citizen journalists, uh, aka CJs, these are your everyday people in the community. Okay, so their focus is more on what the people in the community are going through. The project has really, really helped me a lot because uh, the training that I received before the training start, before the project started, will really help me a lot. You know, to learn a lot of things on citizen journalism, and um, the things that a citizen journalist is supposed to do. Actually, I never knew that you know there was citizen journalism in the world. Not until ACA brought this project. So I really learned a lot. Um, personally, I've achieved a number of things. I've been able, you know, to to interview people in higher offices, people that I thought I could never talk to, I've been able you know, to do stories that have actually had a positive impact on the community. I've done stories that, um, you know, whereby duty bearers have been held accountable in being able, them being able to do the right things that they're supposed to do to the community. The young people that we were training had absolutely no background in journalism. Most of them were just after grade 12, sitting at home, quite despondent actually. And by the end of the project, we, we had about five of them with full-time jobs in, in radio stations and TV, simply on the back of our training. Waking up every day as assistant journalist, really wanting to put in that effort uh, to deliver a story, but some of the things are not uh, in uh, are not in abundance for, for us uh, to access. I think sometimes we even uh, have to use our bicycles to go an extra mile and uh, maybe collect that particular story and maybe tell a story that will help uh, change people's lives. As the European Union, we are proud of the role which was played by the Zambian Governance Foundation in as far as providing capacity development to the different partners that they got to partner with. So the trainings were very good in that they also helped us to see how best we could um, improve our programming. Well, I think for resource mobilization it was really helpful in that um, in as much as we, we received funding from donors, it also helped us to realize that we can also fundraise or mobilize resources using our own efforts by using the resources that we have as an organization. So right from the beginning, uh, the ZGF were on hand to provide training to our team um, in media, for instance, or, set, uh, or social setting up a social media presence in reporting itself um, when it came to also the financial matters. Uh, before ZGF, we had been struggling with coming up with uh, po certain policy documents, such as the constitution, which was in draft for a long, long time, um, and also the human uh, resource manual uh, was outdated. But through uh, 
uh, ZGF. I think we managed to get uh, consultants that helped us to review the documents and we actually finalized and approved by the board. The uh, past development that was provided by ZGF uh, came quite handy in, in terms of data collection, report writing, and also on some of the cross-cutting issues like issues of gender, issues of uh, disability. Those were some of the capacity building that were taken through as uh, officers on the project and we also were able to take those to other people that were implementing our activities in the, in the field. So we feel that we, we received support that would have cost us a whole lot. Organizations such as us, which are grassroots organizations with very little manpower, we need capacity development. So from an, from an overall point of view, um, as a GF, I think we are very pleased with uh, the way the program was implemented, but also with the role that we played to help uh, the eight organizations in basically becoming better at implementing um, uh, 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 the program in their respective, respective areas. Um, I don't think that uh, the successes that were scored on this program would have been possible without the dedicated work of the eight organizations as well as their implementing partners. So I think it was very good to see, even in terms of the collaboration that uh, existed amongst the eight, it was something that bodes well even for the future of civil society organizations in Zambia. Um, Beyond that, um, I think it's also important to mention and to appreciate the role that uh, um, the European Union played in this because the European Union, like I mentioned earlier, provided the, uh, the resources with which the different interventions that uh, were implemented were implemented. And so without the uh, unwavering support of the EU, it would not have been possible for us to achieve the successes that, uh, that we did. So very big thank you to the European Union, uh, but also a big thank you to the eight organizations and their implementing partners. It was their dedication, it was you know, their thinking, it was basically their, their work that contributed to the success of this program. And so big thanks to them as well.